Right, so here I'm in the calf shed and um, I'm just starting to make a bit of extra housing for the calves that we have to keep because we're TB restricted. Uh, we went clear on our first test uh, last week and that means that we only need one more test to go to we're clear and we can start selling again. But that test is still in two months time. So in the meantime, fingers crossed everyone that we're going to pass that test. Uh, in the meantime I've got to make some extra space because uh, we're carving all year round and the calves keep coming through and we haven't really got enough shed space at the moment where we normally keep our calves because of the extra cattle. So I'm making up a little calf pen in a, where we normally keep our heifers over winter it's not too bad, it's a good shed actually. Uh, I've bought a new uh, feed rack which should be delivered soon. Uh, putting a trough in there um, and the idea is to basically keep them uh, going well on uh, plenty of protein um, to make sure they grow well so that they, hopefully we can sell them again when we go clear and they'll look good. So let's crack on and uh, make this extra calf pen and we'll have a look at the calves at the end of it. So we are with our new feed rack for our calves and um, this will go in, in here to make up a pen for all the TB cards we've got to keep. And I better give this gentleman a hand because he needs a hand shift in this. Right, all the best to you, mate. Thanks very much. There we go. So here we are, brand new trough. About 250 quid's worth. And we've got a bit of discount on it. IEA, which everyone knows is a well known brand of stuff. Good galvanised trough feed rack above so we can put some straw in and um, cake and I'm just going to set this up here with um, a couple of other troughs across and maybe some bales to, to put in front of there and we can um, we can make a pen for the bigger calves. Okay, so let's get this trough up into the shed and I'll start making myself a nice little uh, calf pen. Okay, so it's all coming together slowly. Got the gate in place, which once the cattle are in, I'm going to slide across there and put a big bale against there. Trough there for feeding, um, and you saw me carrying in the, the side of a rack. Bit of recycling this. This is um, one of these panels off an old rack that's broken, and they, unbolt, they only bolt on here, look. Um, so you can unbolt them. And basically, what I, what I do to stop the young cattle getting through these gaps. Is I just tie this up with a bit of string because the young cattle will go straight through those bars. So um, interesting that they were that these two are still tied up when I had pigs a few years ago and we kept them in there in that end bay. So I'm just going to tie that rack up there, tie this um, trough to the end barrier there, stop it moving around a bit, and then hopefully I can get the cattle in. Um, we've got to bed this down a bit. Um, and you can see it's a very big area, but realistically, I've, I've learned from my mistake is that nothing is guaranteed. I don't know how long I'll be shut down for. So make a bigger area than you need, and then you haven't got to keep moving the barrier back when you have to put more cattle in. So let's just tie these up together and we're done. Right, the bale of twine, farmer's friend. This is all, all about recycling. Farmers have been recycling long before anyone else because they don't like spending money. So they always reuse bits, and this is the panels off that, one of those feed 
rack, so I'm just going to tie up here. Uh, so although things get broken, it's worth saving bits. And having a farm means you've got space to keep things that will come in handy one day. Uh, I'm just knotting this up here. Take your bags of bay and uh, Do that. Right, just got to try this trough up a little bit, just to stop them when they push against it, because they will push. And they're hungry, they all want that cake in the morning, and they'll, they've got a lot of weight behind these calves, so I'm just going to tie that up. Okay, done. So I've got this end of the trough tied up. These are okay. They don't need to have that much strength, and they won't push that hard against them. Um, so really I've just got to put some straw in there and then get them in here. And here's the straw. Right, we can get the calves. Go on, in. Go on. Shh. Go on. Go on. Okay, so that was the easy bit, getting them out of the out of the yard. The tricky bit is probably going to be getting them into the shed because they probably don't want to go back in there after they've had a little run round out here. Go on, hey, 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 hey. Go on, shh, go on. Go on, hey, 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 hey. Go on. Well, that wasn't too bad. Why is it? Well, actually, that wasn't too bad. They ran in there quite nicely. Um, probably because they're used to being in a shed, they thought I'd like to go back in the shed. And it's raining out there as well. So, uh, I'm just going to tie these uh, gates to that um, and maybe put a bit of cake out and stuff for them and then we'll have a little look at the end. Okay, so uh, I think I'm just about done here. I'll put another bale of in here for uh, feeding. And um, they seem all right so far. Whether I need to put a gate across here, I don't know whether they'll jump over the top of there. I hope not. We might have to do that later. Um, but we've got a, see there's a Belgian Blue over there and an Angus there, which I would normally sell. Would have gone by now. Um, these are freezing heifers. They're looking good, actually. Aren't you girls? Um, 
but you know it's just a case of uh, finding room for all these extra calves um, and like I said fingers crossed for the end of July hopefully we go clear and we can sell some and then this won't be an issue but for now this is our extra calf housing